Hello, and welcome to Volvork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the final video in a 10-part video series in which we're exploring how to build a vCenter orchestrator environment on top of VMware Fusion. In the previous video, we saw how to install and launch the VCO client. And now in this video, the big moment has arrived. We've built our entire infrastructure. We have all the pieces assembled. And now it's time to run a VCO workflow. In this final demonstration, we're going to take a look at running a existing vCenter orchestrator workflow. Now, what that workflow is going to do, it's just one of the out-of-the-box workflows that's provided with VCO. What that workflow is going to do is create a virtual machine. And to show you what I have before, I've already opened up the vSphere client. And the before picture here is I've got the just two VMs, the vCenter server virtual clients and the VCO server. And what I'm going to do to run the workflow is go back to the VCO client. And as you can see, I'm already logged in as the account VCO admin using the same password, VCO admin. And I'm going to switch modes here from run mode to design mode. Strictly speaking, that wasn't necessary. I just preferred design mode. And uh, if necessary, I'd click on this workflows tab, but it's already selected. So I'll simply start expanding the inventory of VCO workflows. In the library folder, there's a folder titled vCenter. This is the folder where all of the workflows that are provided with the vCenter plugin are stored. Down on the bottom, we have virtual machine management and a number of different things uh, from folders that allow us to do different things to virtual machines. We're going to go into basic and in here we have a workflow, an out-of-the-box workflow called create simple virtual machine. To run that workflow, we'll click the start button and then we just need to answer some questions. For instance, it wants to know what the name of the virtual machine is that we're creating. So I'm going to name my virtual machine my virtual machine. Not terribly creative, but that'll work. Then we need to decide where in the inventory of VM folders we want our virtual machine stored. So if I go back over to the vSphere client and switch to VMs and templates view, notice that currently we don't have any folders. But if I want to, I can create a folder. I'll call this My Folder. And that's where we're going to have the new virtual machine land, is in the My Folder folder. So back over here in the VCO client, to set the virtual machine folder, I'll click the link here, which starts off labeled Not Set. We'll click that link. And a browser, don't worry about those warning messages, we'll take care of those in a moment. In the browser window, not a web browser, but a tree browser window that's just about to show up here, we're going to uh, browse through the vCenter inventory to select that virtual machine folder. Now this is taking a few moments the first time we go into this tree browser uh, because VCO, uh, the vCenter plugin in vCO is pulling in uh, inventory information. So here's that tree browser I talked about before. And as I expand through here, uh, you might want to keep an eye on the select button down here. Because until I select a VM folder, um, that button is going to remain grayed out. If ever you forget what you're looking for, the title bar here tells us what we're looking for. So I'll expand. So the plugin starts looking, and it finds that we have one vCenter server. Here's our vCenter server, vcva.vwork.info. I'll continue expanding. Um, this is something called a data centers folder. If you want to know exactly what that's about, come to Come join me in class and I'll teach you about that or watch some of uh, the videos at vmwarelearning.com slash orchestrator. I know there's one in there that talks about that data centers folder. It's not the type of folder we're looking for. Notice if I select it, the select button still grayed out. So that's not the right type of folder. We'll keep expanding. So this is our training data center, not the right folder. Uh, here is a VM folder, which we could select that VM folder. That, that would work, but uh, that we wanted in this particular demonstration to show putting the VM into a specific folder. So I will select my folder and then click the select button. Next we get to specify what size virtual disk we want. Um, I'm going to choose thin provisioning. In fact, let me do that right now before I forget. I'm choosing thin provisioning. So 
um, even though that's 10 whopping gigabytes of disk space uh, that the VM thinks it has, the virtual disk is actually going to be smaller than that. It'll grow as needed. I'm going to create a tiny virtual machine here, just 256 megabytes of memory. And I'm only going to give it one virtual CPU. Under guest OS, if we click the link, we get a list. We have to hit, type something here in the filter or simply hit enter to get that list. But as you can see here, we have a number of different guest operating systems that we can indicate that we're installing. I'm not actually planning on installing a guest OS, so I'm just going to choose the first choice. Ordinarily, you'd want to choose the right choice here because the choice you choose here determines things such as which version of VMware tools you're going to get. So I've selected DOS Guest. We'll click Select. Uh, we've already specified that we want thin provision disks. Uh, as you can see here, we've just answered the general, the, the first screen of questions is just general parameters. What we're going to do next is go to the infrastructure section where it wants to know things such as what host do we want the virtual machine created on. Again, by now you've learned that these are just links that we click on. Uh, we go into the tree browser again, and this time I'm going to select a host. So not the host folder, but the host. I'm going to run this Hang on a second here. There's the host. Um, again, come to class to learn what this is. This is a host folder. This is a, a uh, something called a cluster compute resource, and this is the actual host. So we select the host, click select, then we'll click on resource pool. Again, either in class or in the videos at vmwarelearning.com slash orchestrator, you can learn what this resource pool thing is I'm selecting. So it's down in the host. So there's our resource pool. We'll click select. Next we specify what network we want this virtual machine plugged into. We only have one network currently, so we'll select that one. And then we're going to specify which data store we want the virtual machine stored in. Again, I only have one data store, so I'll choose that data store. Click select. We'll click submit. The workflow starts running, which you can see indicated here. Let me rush over to the vSphere client, though, and notice in the vSphere client it says that, it, well, it's already done. It says it's created a virtual machine, and to prove it's done so, drum roll please, let's go into the My Folder folder, and sure enough, there's that virtual machine. If we look at that virtual machine, it's got one virtual CPU, 256 megabytes. In fact, it's configured exactly the way we said we want it created. So there's our virtual machine. It's created. This time we didn't create the virtual machine using the vSphere client or the vSphere web client. Instead, we created it using a workflow. One last comment before I wrap this up. Uh, I'm still using the vSphere client in this demonstration. But at this point in the video, now that we've got everything set up, uh, I don't have to use the vSphere client anymore. I was really just using that to, to deploy the virtual appliances. Um, now that I got the virtual appliances deployed, I don't have to run the vSphere client anymore. And in fact, I don't even have to run this Windows VM anymore. So we've reached the end of this video series. Do you let me know if you have any feedback on um, things about uh, this series of videos that work for you or don't work? Feel free to post those on my blog site. And if you have any questions about how to do this, please feel post those there too. Again, there are videos at vmwarelearning.com slash orchestrator where you can go to learn more about Orchestrator or you can look at the upcoming series of videos I'll be posting on my blog. But once again, thank you very much for attending. Maybe I'll see you in class, teach you about VCO there. Hope you've enjoyed this video series and I'll see you in the next series.